today we are going to talk about cannabis in Texas and one of the many blue spots in Texas, all the large cities as they are. Uh, we're talking about a uh, local ordinance in Dallas to decriminalize marijuana. <clears throat> Officials in Dallas, Texas, have certified that advocates collected enough signatures to qualify a marijuana decriminalization for the local ballot in November. The city secretary affirmed on Friday that the advocacy, advocacy organization Ground Game Texas submitted nearly 50,000 valid petitions for the cannabis reform measure. This comes about a month after activists turned in the signatures. If voters ultimately approve the initiative, possession of up to four ounces of marijuana would be decriminalized in Dallas, which is the third largest city in Texas by population. The overwhelming support of the ballot petition by Dallas voters is evidence that listening to the community and organizing around issues that matter to them is key to building voter enthusiasm and turnout, Katina Vollinger, executive director of Ground Game Texas, said in a press release. She continued, this would not have been possible without the dedication and expertise of our field staff who were able to not only collect tens of thousands of signatures, but also ensure that those signatures were accurate and verifiable. We look forward to winning in November and continuing to build our movement. Some members of the city council had expressed interest in streamlining the process by acting legislatively, but plans to introduce the proposal at a hearing last month did not materialize, leaving the matter to voters. The council will still need to formally place the initiative on the ballot now that the signatures have been verified. That's expected to happen on August 14th. Legally, council has no discretion on these matters. We must vote to add the amendments to the charter package that voters in November will vote on, Councilman Chad West, a Democrat, said in an email newsletter. It will be up to the voters to determine whether or not to support the initiatives. The measure would prevent police from making arrests or issuing citations for Class A or B misdemeanor cannabis possession offenses unless it's a part of a higher priority felony investigation for narcotics or violent crime. Further, it says, quote, Dallas police shall not consider the odor of marijuana or hemp to constitute probable cause for any search or seizure, end quote. The city manager and chief of police would be required to prepare quarterly reports on the implementation of the policy change with information about any marijuana possession arrests or citations that would be submitted to the Dallas City Council. Meanwhile, earlier this month, activists in Bastrop, Texas, right up the road from me, turned in what they believe to be enough signatures to put another marijuana decriminalization initiative on the local November ballot. Voters in multiple other Texas cities have enacted local decriminalization policies, but the movement has had ups and downs. For example, in a win for advocates, a Texas district court judge last month dismissed a lawsuit from the Republican state attorney general, Ken Paxton, who sought to overturn a local voter-approved marijuana decriminalization initiative here in Austin. That means a cannabis reform measure approved by voters in 2022 remains effective, pending any potential appeal from Paxton to a higher court. Paxton's office filed lawsuits against the cities of Austin, San Marcos, Killeen, Elgin, and Denton over their decriminalization policies that voter passed. Elgin is, is about 10 minutes up the road from me. San Marcos and Killeen, are, or San Marcos is down near San Antonio. Um, and if I recall correctly, I believe the judge threw out the lawsuit uh, against San Marcos uh, either yesterday or Monday as well. Meanwhile, activists in Lockhart recently turned in what they say are more than enough signatures to qualify a cannabis decrim initiative for this local ballot this November. In a setback from advocates, however, voters in Lubbock rejected a separate cannabis reform initiative last month. Governor Greg Abbott, a Republican, has re separately lashed out against the municipal cannabis reform efforts. He said, local communities such as towns, cities, and counties, they don't have the authority to override state law, the governor said in May. If they want to see a different law pass, they need to work with their legislatures. This let's legislate to work to make sure that the state as a state will pass some of the law. He said it would also lead to chaos and create an unworkable system for voters in individual cities to be picking and choosing the laws they want to abide by under state statute. Abbott has previously said that he doesn't believe that people should be in jail over marijuana possession, although he mistakenly suggested at the time that Texas had already enacted a decriminalization policy to that end. Paxton, the state attorney general, used more inflammatory rhetoric when his office announced in January that it was suing five cities over local laws decriminalizing marijuana that voters approved, vowing to overrule the quote-unquote anarchy of pro-crime extremists who advocated for the reform. 
In general, the measures that have already been enacted in Austin, Denton, Elgin, Harker Heights, Killeen, and San Marcos prevent police from making arrests or issuing citations for Class A or B misdemeanor cannabis possession offenses unless it's a part of a high-priority felony investigation for narcotics or violent crime. Shortly after voters in Harker Heights approved their measure, the city council overturned the ordinance over concerns that it conflicted with state law. But activists collected signatures for another initiative and successfully repealed the repeal last year. The officials have still refused to move forward with implementing the will of the voters. In November, Ground Game released a report that looked at the impact of marijuana reform laws. It found that measures will keep hundreds of people out of jail even as they have led to blowback from law enforcement in some cities. The initiatives have also driven voter turnout by being on the ballot, the report said. Uh, another cannabis decrim measure that went before uh, voters in San Antonio last May was overwhelmingly defeated, but that proposal also included unrelated provisions to prevent enforcement of abortion restrictions. So uh, we have some more possible decrim down the pipeline here this year for, for Texas. Um, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Kyle Yeager at Marijuana Moment. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for covering that story. Um, but let's kick it back to the team. I want to hear what everyone has to say. This is exciting for me personally, being a, a resident of Texas. Uh, it's interesting to see and, and good to see that some of the other big cities are taking Austin's lead and decriminalizing possession. I know from my few interactions with Austin police, usually at, you know, at, at soccer matches or, or elsewhere at, at events that they very much do not want to, to be enforcing you know marijuana prohibition at a, at a large scale unless again it's related to some other felony investigation that they're working on um so it'll be interesting to see how one what the turnout on this is how it impacts voter turnout and other down ballot initiatives in uh dallas area but yeah let's hear what the rest of the team has to say this is so home with high at nine news I mean, I, I feel like this is good news, but I feel like uh, Lieutenant Governor is going to ultimately just do the same things that he has done in the past and uh, nullify the people's will. Yeah, but I, I mean, the so did. Go oh, go ahead, Rico. I was going to say, I, I think the whole continued prohibition in, in, in Texas goes against their entire mantra as a state. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It does. Of, um, will Austin secede from Texas? No. Hell no. That would be funny. Like the rest Pretoria. of Texas got bigger and better guns. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't reminds, say, I don't. I don't think that's true, Rico. <laughs> Austin's this reminds me of what we were going through before 215 in California um, became an initiative. Because if you remember Dan Lundgren, mm -hmm. he yep. was and he was an asshole about yes, marijuana. He was. He did some really crazy shit and. Oakland, San Francisco, they just were not hip to, to um, going out enforcing these laws. Mm -hmm. Karen Tallinan, who was the DA in Frisco, said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going after violent criminals. We don't care if people, you know, you know, if Dennis Perone selling weed out of his apartment, who gives a shit? They're sick people. Leave them alone. Well, you know what? You know what, oh. Dale? You know what, Dale? And, and um, because Dan Lungren called an emergency meeting of all chiefs law enforcement at the time that 215 passed and had a whole meeting with them as far as how to make this law not exist. And Terrence Hallinan, who was the district attorney of San Francisco at the time, uh, he he was the only a uh, member of the law enforcement community that was totally against all of these actions. And that's where they decided that they would use transporting as the way to make this law not exist because Prop 215 did not include the transportation of cannabis. Well, until Pebbles Trippet case came yep. up, yep. they decided, well, we're, it makes no sense to be able to have marijuana, but you can't take it anywhere with you. Mm -hmm. So we got a handle on that. But what we've seen is that even with now psychedelics, local jurisdictions are going, you know what, I, I don't want to enforce this. If the state wants to come in and do it fine. The DEA wants to do fine. But no, no agency at the state or federal level is equipped to go handle somebody that's growing weed in their backyard. Mm -hmm. You need local law enforcement to be able to come in. If they don't want to do it, momentum now, Soham, is going to move towards requiring a statewide initiative if the central government won't get off their ass and do this. That's what we ultimately came to in California. And they decided to make it medical because at that time it's probably easier to get passed. But today would be, let's just make this lawful for everybody. I mean, um, I think that's the way to go, of course. I do think it's interesting that, that they, in Abbott's, in Governor Abbott's quote in this article, that he's pushing for legislative change when it's his own dipshit lieutenant governor that refuses to bring initiatives that have 
the momentum to pass in the state legislature, he refuses to bring them to the floor for a vote. So for me, it's a, a lot of just, you know, yapping from, from his point of view because it, it's his administration that's effectively blocking any real state level legislative change at this time. Mm -hmm. Politicians don't do that. Well, that political dynamics, why we have the initiative process in the United States. Back in the early part of the 20th century, back during the Teddy Roosevelt administration and the Taft administration, people were just sick and tired of these, these state governments not doing shit, so they allowed initiatives to be brought forth. They had to be a single issue, but many, many, most states now have initiative processes that the government can't get its head out of its ass. We're going to bring it to the people, let the voters vote on it. And we've seen it. California broke that. Colorado did too. Um, and I hope Texas will get their head on their ass. I don't. I actually don't believe that Texas does have a state level petition process for for citizen backed initiatives. It can be done at a local level, but I'm not 100 percent on that. So if anybody knows better, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But um, the last I checked, I don't believe Texas. Texas is like New York in that sense, where I, I don't believe that citizens are allowed to put initiatives on the state ballot. Mm -hmm. Which is very dumb and unfortunate, because it would I, it would easily pass. Mm -hmm.